Hey, you motherfuckers, how's it going? Kevin Skolanders here. Oh, oh my god! Whoa! Whoa! Oh, oh, no, 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 that's so fucking loud. Oh my god. Fuck, man. Ah! Was, was this necessary? Oh my god. Ah! Okay, let's, let's just, okay, you know what? Let's get this shit started, shall we? So, in case you guys are wondering, I am going to be reviewing my friend Fed Enterprise's latest two episodes of Paramount Logo Reasons, the 43rd and 43rd. So, enjoy the fucking show! Yeah! Hey, Sam. What do you want? A raise? Well, guess what? To fucking bad. But yeah, what the heck? Where you gonna say to me? Why is this show still going? That emo looking motherfucker at the beginning of this episode said that this show was going nowhere. So what the crap are we gonna use for this season? He's not fucking emo, you stupid twat. Anyways, we are using the 1995 logo from the first season through episode 50. And start rolling that goddamn camera and cue that mountain that I want to stick my six in. Okay. You are such a disgusting pig. You know YouTube hates this shit. Yeah. Like I give a rap's cock and shit. You don't get paid <laughs> from this crap anyway. Scotty. Roll the goddamn camera and God, cue that sexy man, mountain savage. right now, or I will send you to the Mongolian mass and will laugh at your ass. Holy fuck, man! Wow. Okay. For real. I'm gonna be straight up honest right now and say that I forgot half of the requests. But that won't well, stop me from bringing in it. more random shit. Like this, for example. Jesus. Honesty's the best policy. That's what they always tell me. Damn. You think this shit is scary? Ha. Huh. Roseanne is more scarier than this piece of shit logo. Can he even say that? Yeah, sure. Why the hell not? Don't drag politics into this shit, you fucking dickbags. Wow. Politics are damn everywhere. Now let's get to the next logo. Okay. Welcome back, Taylor. Hmm. That's the media logo, is it? No, wait a minute. Let me see. Let me see. Let me see. What is that? That's Orion. Okay, cool. Holy fuck. Wow. After 6,000 years, they finally added that byline. They ain't bankrupt now, you assholes. Um. That I. 
that reminds me of CBS. Now, if wow. you'll excuse me, I'm going to the bar. Fucking why? Robots can't drink. Then again, you sound drunk as shit. Hashtag Taylor Logic. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, look, it's Galma. That's Galma. Yeah. Leon Galma is smiling in his grave right now. Even 80 some odd years onward. Didn't we use this logo of the four? Um, I don't think we have. If we did, remind Taylor's dumbass in the comments below me. NANI?! God. Oh! I wasn't expecting that. Huh. Uh oh. What is this? Oh, I, I, I think I remember. Uh oh. Oh my god! Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god! <laughs> Not this dumb bastard to chest logo! Get it out of here right now! Wait. Damn! That is savage! Shit! Yes, 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 Oh my god. Sgt. Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club. Huh. Wow. Okay. <laughs> Damn. All my childhood. with Fox, isn't it? Yeah, that actually happened. Legitimately, that actually happened. I haven't got a chance to say this, but you should bring in the pill oh! text and the Viacom by line. You don't ask cop licking son of a fucking shit. Yeah. Do it. Give me Paramount right <laughs> fucking now, or else I will fire your ass. You want to Oh help? my god. You That's fucking just... got it. <laughs> well, he, he's gonna get it. I mean, yeah, he's gotta get something. Um, you put the logo over the mountain. Oh. What the hell? Golly! Like a fucking boss! Oh lord, I I don't even know what to say about this. I just. Oh man, I I give up. This is some next level savagery here. I don't give a damn what anyone says. This is You fucking oh, oh, goddamn God. hobo operator. No. Why the fuck did Taylor no. do? In the first place now we are never gonna get this done in over with because you keep <laughs> fucking up the damn logo <laughs> Cause, cause, um, copyright. Okay, let's, let's look at the next episode. By the way, this one was called Back For Real, hence the mention at the beginning, but still. Let's look at this one, huh? Let's look at this shit. Let's look at this. 
No, seriously. Let's look at this one. Oh, nice intro, by the way. Okay, let's get this shit over with. Wow. Wow. My life has changed. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> what a way to start an episode, huh? Shit. Oh my god. <laughs> Shut your bubblegum, dumb, oh. dumb, looking ass the fuck up. Wow, what an asshole! Ah. <laughs> wow. <laughs> wow, what an asshole! Shit, oh. What? My six of the town live reference. Okay. Wow. Wow, the mountains of fat ass. Ha 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 what did I fucking tell you about calling uh -oh. me fat? You know what, bitch? Holy shit. I have something for you to enjoy. Take that your mommy shaving son of a crack whore. Oh no. This is not gonna be good. Favorite song. Here you go, Lerla. For trying to scare uh -oh. me with a demon bitch ass logo. Here's a logo to scare Scotty. Uh -oh. Take this. No. Oh shit. Oh ho 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 Cause that, that shit clearly came out of nowhere, so... You are such a fucking pussy. Oh, Most people don't even uh... find me to be scary. Anyways, come with me to- <laughs> God, man! <laughs> yeah, it's like, no, nah, I gotta put a stop to that. So of course you did that. What the Why fuck? Are you freaking killing me? <laughs> this is Paramount Logo Bloopers, yo! This is PBS. This is PBS. Wrong! <laughs> I don't I don't know how to respond to that, I swear. Oh my god. Oh look, it's EA Games. Question you know what? I think you guys will get it right after this. What is that? What the fuck even is that? Is this a joke? Ella Oh my god. <laughs> Jesus, man. Oh. Oh, look, it's me. Do you think it's Dude, chill your tits. 
I'll probably get it right next time. Shut the fuck up! Exactly. <laughs> well, that's... that's weird. What is this? 1970. Get this piece of shit out of here now. Bitch, don't tell my boyfriend what to do. Oh my Who do God. you think you are, Microsoft Sam? You're not the goddamn director. Don't talk to my girlfriend like that, you son of a bitch. Stay the fuck out of this, you virgin looking motherfucker. Oh my god. Yulis go fan. Yulis go fan savage. Man. Wow. You are such a fucking milf. Oh. How does Copy put up with you? Holy shit. Oh, <gasps> this. Motherfucker. I'm a psychic! The fucking V of Doom is scarier than that piece lol. of shit. And guess fucking what? lol. I'm not scared of it. Besides, DTS is one of our sponsors since 2014. Right. Nice for the fourth wall break. Final explosion. Logo. God. Fucking. Why you know fourth wall explosion? <laughs> ah! It. I mean, duh. Ah, it's just. Let's continue with this shit. Fuck Coca Cola. That shit doesn't give my creator the energy for these PLD episodes. Okay, let me guess. Mountain Dew? And now you can be here. Damn right, yeah! We've come here to tell you that you need to stop breaking the fourth wall. <laughs> oh my god. Deadpool. Do they have to appear in every fucking episode? And you can't fucking tell me what to do, you stupid, worthless piece of shit. How dare you call us a uh -oh. piece of shit? After all we've been through, we oh. can't believe that you betrayed us like this. Holy shit, I'm so sorry, oh I thought you God. were someone else, oh, MG, what have I done? I'm just kidding, man! Oh! <laughs> you had me fooled there, buddy! You had me so fooled! Oh my God, dude, that's... They're savage! I, I don't know what to say about that, Richard. I don't, I don't even care. This video has been an absolute clusterfuck. I fucking agree. Next. No shit! Wow, that, that brings me back quite a ways, doesn't it? That logo is sexy as shit, holy fuck. Oh god. What the fuck is this channel anymore? I don't know what this channel is anymore either, Hank, so don't even feel bad. Or are you Jimmy? 
Yeah, you're probably Jimmy. I'm not very good with names anyway. SFM Entertainment Division of SFM Media Corporation. Wow. Scotty, please get this next take right or else. Okay, I'll try. Here goes nothing. Okay. Let's see where this goes. Hey! They finally got the logo right! Yeah, man! Yeah, what? Oh my god. Scotty, you are a fucking troll! You call me weird. Oh, believe me, I'm turned on by worse shit than that. What is that? I've never heard of this, and I don't give a shit either. That makes a lot of sense. Okay, our time is done. Let's break for lunch. Maybe we'll get it right again. And that's gonna do it. So from all you people to myself, this is Kevin the Skull Anderson, founder, owner, operator, CEO, chairman, and president of Skull Media Enterprises, wishing all of you... A very happy rest of your Tuesday. <laughs> Alright, motherfuckers! He's going wide! He's going wide! It's a wide shot! It's an absolute fucking wide shot! You can see it from here to eternity! Ah, yeah! Then run die! You thought it was gonna be somebody else, didn't you now? Ah, okay. So. Welcome to Scully Goes Wide. I'm Kevin the Skull Anderson. And I'd like to review, to all of you, some of the worst fucking excuses of pro wrestling that has ever disgraced the sport. Namely, anything that has something that follows with the words of wrestling in its title. Let's get started, shall we? Jesus Christ. Yeah, okay, we're gonna start off with the obvious. Grandmasters of Wrestling, 1993. What an epic disaster this was. You had the whole talent roster of legends at your disposal. Iron Right Shark. 
Red Veteran, Devin Storm, Blassie, Freddie Blassie, Baron Von Rask, Iron Sheik, and a guy who we had never heard of before prior, mind you, to Grandmasters of Wrestling Shows, a Jew of the nickname The Mighty Maccabee, who also has a Facebook page. And the reason why I say this is because these Grandmasters of Wrestling shows were taped 25 years ago. 25 years. Guess who was the announcer? You'll never guess. You'll never guess. And, and actually, don't guess because you're looking at it in the freaking screen right now. This guy's name is Mike Amundsen. And you know, when a guy has, oh man, in his last name, you know he's a pretty bad announcer. But that's not the case with all announcers with the last names that start with O9. Oh, uh, God, what the fuck is this shit? You have so many fans in the crowd that are so disinterested in this fucking show. By the way, by the way, this is not to count the fact that Glassy Freddy Blassie, which by the way stole the show in a nutshell, simply by singing a song called Pencil Neck Geek, which if I'm not mistaken was written by some guy back in the 60s and 50s. And this guy, you know, Glassy Freddy Blassie, being this classic guy that he was, Sang pencil neck geek, and, and then this guy, this guy ruins the whole damn segment. Every time there's a chorus, he just fucking lays a piece of paper up that reads chorus on it. And that's how the whole segment went to shit. Luckily, Blassie Freddy Blassie, being the class act that he is, saved face saved this segment from being the most god-awful thing known to man by swinging his guitar the guy with the chorus piece of paper and basically pulling the Jeff Jarrett before Jeff Jarrett started pulling Jeff Jarrett's. Needless to say, this was the only saving grace of the show aside from the Mighty Maccabees two matches against the Iron Sheik and Iron Mike Shaw. By the way, the latter two of which were aligned with one another. So let's keep that in mind. For the Maccabea Heavyweight Championship Honors. No, 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 no. Let's continue. Number two, right? The Olympian. He was Kurt Angle before Kurt Angle was Kurt Angle. Ken Patera, he is obviously really, really freak. But what the hell would I know? I don't know shit. But this guy, he cuts a promo, if I recall. Wasn't the best promo, wasn't the worst either. You talk about the worst, look at anything Rowan Reigns has come up with over the last four years. Look at Lex Luger's 2000 promo. You know, the most cringe promo you'll ever see. Wrestling of Regret talked about that particular promo. Boy, did he deliver. I'm a big fan of Brian Zane. Big fan of Jim Cornette. Big fan of anyone who understands wrestling. But that's beside the point, is it? By the way, Baron Von Rask. I believe he had a match. It wasn't so good. And just based on these three pictures that you see right here, right above the logo, oh my freaking Lord, were these people disinterested or what? And what about Michael Manson? The guy who announced the main event. Actually, it's a double main event because the first one ended in a DQ and then the Mighty Maccabee. 
wanted a rematch because even though he won via DQ, he was not awarded the belt because belts are not supposed to change hands as a result of a DQ. So he gets his rematch. He defeats the Iron Sheik despite being the most overly generic jobber in wrestling history. And every ninth grade math teacher's fantasies finally came true that night in a form of that man, which you see on the final left hand corner of your screen, the mighty Maccabee. Not that it means anything, but the hell is run. Alright, let's consider the facts. The mighty Maccabee and classy Freddie Blassie. I didn't think those two would work, right? These two were the only saving graces of this show. Everyone else just brought the damn thing down. By the way, by the way, the Mighty McAbee won both of his matches. Both of them. It's 2 and 0 as of that particular tape. Now, he did wrestle another match. On another man, on another Grandmasters of Wrestling DVD, but he won that one too. So his short-lived career as a sports entertainer, not a wrestler, he's a sports entertainer. Well, at least he would be in TNA or Ring of Honor or WWE, anywhere else, but not here. No, Grandmasters of Wrestling, no, this guy. This guy ain't no hands with town, though he won't be anywhere else. This guy is main event material. The whole damn thing revolved around him. And surprisingly, he managed to raise a good deal of money to produce these shows. By the way, he was a main book. He's a fan of all these wrestlers from the past, so he wanted to make them go alive and go together. That's it, right? Yeah. But anyway, this guy, the Monty McAbee, organized these shows and made a hell of a lot of money in doing so. And I tip my hat to you, sir. You have my respect. And not only that, but you have many people's respects, too. And I'm going to tell you now, brother. I had no idea how much of an epic win you ended up becoming. Because 25 years later, we done saw your Facebook. Yeah, that's right, man. We done saw your Facebook. You an internet sensation now. You world famous, man. I'm world famous, bitch. Yeah, you tell them, man, that could be. Anyway. This one, which occurred six years following the tapings of Grandmasters Wrestling DVDs. Of course, I'm talking about the other terrible pay per view with a word being followed by the phrase of wrestling title. Uh, by the way, you probably already know this. You know how many people sat on this pay per view? And I'm not talking about the one in '93. I'm talking about the one in '99. You know how many? You know how many people shat all over Heroes of Wrestling? I mean, good Lord in heaven! What the fuck is that? What is that? Personally, I wouldn't have even considered booking that 
pay-per-view as a whole, just like the one that you're seeing about right now. You know this one, this one right? Yeah. So here's a rest. The worst fucking show of the 20th century. And what a way to close out the 20th century. What a way to close out the second millennium, right? To come up with a show that would scar children for the rest of their goddamn lives. What about this show, huh? Got the debut of a man called Cole Scorpio. Cole Scorpio. Well, of course, he was known as Julio Fantastico. I recall. Not that I don't recall anything, it's just that I choose not to know most of these. It's not that I don't know Heroes of this was not intended to be one of the people to you. Because the guy behind it, a man named Bill Stone, initially intended that should this pay-per-view succeed with at least a .01 buy rate, which ironically was his goal, that he would make a sequel to the show in the spring of 2000, which would never happen. Because this show sucked! It absolutely sucked. And I'll tell you why. First of all, they had this guy pictured near the center, the announcer of that show. He delivered probably the most infamous line of any announcer. Somebody's gonna get their ass whipped tonight in here! That's right. There's nobody acting to such a degree that's saying somebody's gonna get their ass whipped tonight. And by somebody, I mean nobody. Because many of the talents booked for this pay-per-view were clearly over the hill. Their glory days were long behind them for a generation by this point, in some cases. And we had a 770-pound Yokozuna main eventing this pay-per-view. What the fuck? <laughs> How do you... Why the hell would Bill Stone He's stupid. Absolutely fucking stupid. There's, there's no way to say it. And then, this, and then he hires this, this baseball sportscaster to be the lead color commentator for the show and announce mid-show that Captain Lou, Captain Lou, Captain Lou, wow, man, oh, would be the commissioner of Heroes of Wrestling. I don't know how to respond to that, but I will say this was an absolute abortion from second one. Absolute abortion. And George the Animal Steel in a match. They had Cowboy Bob Orton and a soon-to-be dementia sufferer in Jimmy Snuka. God rest his soul. And that would be a very cringe match. Of course, I mentioned earlier the debut of Scorpio, also known as Julio Fantastico. And I also need to mention now King Kong Bundy, Jim Nightheart, Nikolai Volkov, Greg the Hammer Valentine, and a miniature King Kong Bundy look like. We'll just call him King Kong Bundy Jr. at this point. Because that's what he looks like. He was actually one of the bookers for you. He was actually on staff, on ring staff. No, he was primarily the guy in charge of the security team over there, right? 
And then, and then of course, the infamous match between the Battle of the Super Heavyweights. The former Yokozuna taking on King Kong Bundy. That was actually supposed to go on last drunken antics of a clearly inebriated Jake Roberts who just several years prior had been released for the second time by WWE and WWF because of promos like You wanna play 21? I got 22 you wanna play blackjack? I got too many of those too. You wanna play footsie? I got too many of those too. Then of course they had Abdullah the Butcher take on One Man Gang. In another battle of the super heavyweights, except OH MY GOD THE BLOOD! Bill the Butcher, who was known for using a fork in his matches to carve the skin of his opponents, he decided to do that again with a man gang in this particular taping. I believe it's October 1999, I don't know how many times, so it makes perfect sense that they could come up with a pay per view of this cringe level. As I like to call it, THE WORST IN THE WORLD! But anyway, another notable segment was the Bible call. But that was not supposed to be the demonstration. What was supposed to be the demonstration was in fact much different. But Jake Roberts, of course, being the man that he was, the drunken inebriated, intoxicated as balls man that he was, staggered pretty much the entire night in the main event, which was basically two events rolled into one, and he basically just, he didn't know where the hell he was that night, he was just fucking lost. Lost as a bone in high weeds! And then he lays his pet snake on this, this guy. That was the cherry on top of the worst pay-per-view in the history of wrestling up until December to December, which was WWE's failed ECW relaunch summed up in about two and a half hours. God was this fucking terrible. And I didn't even know this was around at the time until I saw the commercial. I was like, oh my god, I gotta see this. And I saw this. Oh no, why did I fucking waste my time? Ah! But the rest of the state today is history which we pray to God will never repeat. Oh wait, TNA. So history. Yeah. And you thought WCW, and its worst was bad. You thought TNA during Vince Russo eras were bad. This one, this one was far worse. So much 
worse. You can't even inhale the script of this. And, and by the way, Grandmasters of Wrestling is a team in Paris. So let's keep that in mind. And that was score goes on. Everybody, we're going wide now. It's a wide shot. Oh, yeah, man. We're gonna go wide up in this motherfucker. Ah. Hi, how you doing? I am Kevin the Skull Anderson, and this is Scully Goes Wide. The only show on my YouTube channel where I give my honest to God review on things that I either like or hate. And there's not a whole hell of a lot of things that I hate. But I can tell you now, one of the things that I do like, I'm going to be reviewing in this video, as well as something that I hate too. So, just so you know, just, just get a clear cut shot of that. Because you're going to need it. That's right. You're going to need it. And and one more thing. I don't care. Just get to the bastard video already. All right. Let me get this straight. Let me get this straight. You guys want to pay a video game reviewer one quarter of a million dollars to produce a movie Featuring him playing a game from 30 years ago on a console that is prehistoric now. I'll tell you what I think of that. You guys are fucking idiots. You know that? I have never... Oh my god. You people are fucking retarded. Honestly. Now, here's what gets me. Here's what gets me. You see, this, this YouTuber, this very popular YouTuber named AVGN, he's an average vitriolic gaming nerd I'm assuming that's what AVGN stands for but I wouldn't know for sure since I don't care enough to watch his channel that much but but this guy swindled you people out of a quarter of a million dollars to produce a movie that he probably hadn't eaten starting on at the time when he was doing his Kickstarter or whatever or his GoFundMe and then he wants to raise another $60,000 to do a review of a game from 30 years ago that some gaming developer, some programmer from the 1980s made and it's also going to be featuring the programmer who made the game himself and it's, it's basically just going to be, you know, a glorified YouTube review. It's basically what it is, a glorified web show. That's all it is. Just a glorified web show. Meanwhile, meanwhile, I do all my videos for free. I don't want to make money off of my videos. I don't give a damn about money. I deserve to let you people know that you people deserve to watch my videos for free. And if you want, this is your choice, not mine. Should I start a Patreon, you can pay me a dollar a month to get content that I post to my YouTube channel, as well as stuff on my DeviantArt and my Twitter and my Facebook, pretty much all my social media pages, right? You know, my Pinterest feed, you know, stuff. Just stuff. All costs you is one dollar. 
is not just a phrase that contests issues on the price is right anymore, it's also the freaking truth. But again, this is your choice, not mine. I just want to let you have the creative control because you have creative control. You get to play the creative control card. Unlike the people who follow AVGN who don't, who aren't allowed to play the creative control card because they're forced to buy into a bunch of fraudulent bullcrap that is generally not worth believing at all. I don't even know why the hell people buy into this. Like, why would anybody want to pay this guy $60,000 for a glorified YouTube video that reviews a game from some 35 years ago? The game is called Cheetah Man, by the way. There is a YouTube compilation video from a guy who I'm not going to name featuring a man named Cedric, also known by a pseudonym Wrestling Jesus, who commented about this, this fundraiser, or really it's a Ponzi scheme is what it is, it's a Ponzi scheme. Not that I know what a Ponzi scheme is, but who gives a shit, right? Nobody's gonna care, you know? And now for something that I really like, and something that you're gonna like too. Check this shit out. Let's talk about my friend Cedric, aka Wrestling Jesus, aka Wrestling Christ on Twitter. Not that he has a Twitter anymore because he closed his YouTube account again for like the 17,000th time because he's a wrestling fan for life, like me. I've been a wrestling fan since I was born. But, but Wrestling Jesus, you know, this guy is the most hilarious YouTube wrestling commentator I have ever seen in my freaking life. I mean, this this guy is just so legit, man. Holy crap. This guy is legit. Listen, listen, listen to some of his material. Listen to some of his material. You're never going to believe. Oh, watch, 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 watch. Huh. <laughs> what a fun day. <laughs> I mean, you gotta love this guy. This guy is a big ball of fun. Kind of like me, I'm, I'm turning into a big ball of fun too, but except my fun is more fat than fat. Keep in mind, there's a difference between fat with an F and fat with a PH. Fat with a PH means that you live in the right way. Fat with an F means you're not. But I don't need to tell you that, now do I? After all, I don't suck the donkey's dick like all Democrats in Congress ever. I'll get to that in a later video, but as a matter of fact, hell, I don't need to get to that in a later video, because I already point that shit out on my other web shows. So you already know that, don't you? So Wrestling Jesus, the YouTube celebrity and personality who's famous for his wrestling commentaries and reviews of shows from the past and present, this guy is a certifiable boss. He goes about stuff like this just right, and I don't need to explain it to you because you've already seen his shit, and it's good shit. It's not the kind of shit that The View points out and shits out of their ass on a daily basis. No, this is good shit. This is too legit to quit kind of shit. This, so, this is so good, you'll literally fall to sleep to this, and then 10 hours later, wake up, and you're like, Ooh, yeah! I'm ready to go! Let's step into the danger zone! Yeah, I mean, by the way, 
big Randy Savage fan. That's what I am. I like Randy Savage. I think he was a great wrestler. Then, of course, he died a few years ago, and stuff happened, and, and then he was inducted into the Hall of Fame, but whatever, right? Wrestling Jesus, by the way, this guy, Cedric, absolutely killer in his reviews. He tells it exactly how it is, no filter, no chill, savage level, one Google percent, and that's Google with a gall at the end, not a ghoul, right? Because this isn't Google, this is Google. Big difference. Very, 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 very big difference. By the way, here's what I think of wrestling Jesus. Hey, man, you got it, bro. You absolutely got it. Keep doing what you're doing because you're absolutely rocking it. That's right, brother and sister, whoever you people are. I mean, other than that, but I mean, it's just worth pointing out at this point. Not that I should care or anything, but it's just not worth it to care more. By the way, hi, lady, taking a photograph. How you doing? That's that's the lady over there. See it, see it, see it. Oh, by the way, by the way, here's another thing I like that I'm gonna review. Sean's View Entertainment. The man who gets constant flack over his constant stream of CM Punk Returns to Wrestling videos. Honestly, I don't blame the guy, cause, cause, well, I'm not in the right frame of mind to. I don't think anybody is. But let me, let me just, okay, okay. Here's the thing. Sean's View Entertainment is the most consistent, prolific, and dedicated, brash commentator and reviewer of wrestling and journalist of wrestling news on YouTube. I think he started this whole YouTube wrestling journalism craze before... I think anybody else, I think he started this like 2011, 2012, but this guy has 115,000 followers on YouTube, and of course he, he did some pretty sketchy stuff, like, like that one time where he exposed his CONSENSUAL PENIS, but uh, I'll let that slide, because that's understandable, because his, his dick was burned in the shower. Um, I think I just went a bit too far. But anyway, anyway, anyway. Sean's View Entertainment posts some really interesting content, and this guy is legit. You just, you gotta, you gotta check this guy out for yourself. Because this guy is, is... He's totally off the wall when it comes to his reviews, but he's he's a bit more toned down than Wrestling Jesus. But, but, but again, this is just my this is my take on it. So don't even don't even try to argue with me because what I'm saying is probably not going to be 100% accurate 100% of the time, and I'll tell you if it's not accurate. But Sean's View Entertainment, this guy is legit at what he does. And 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 this guy, this guy, I'll I'll give you I'll give you another example. I'll give you I'll give you an example. Like like one of his videos. Cause he has a very, very keen sense of humor. And this guy. Oh, oh, by the way, 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 by the way. He posted something on his YouTube a few years back regarding the loss of Ronda Rousey to Beth Corrier. So, yeah, I mean, not that it matters, but you get it. This only took for Rousey. Ronda Rousey took the Facebook bitch, and I'm gonna pull her the bitch because she's pushing everything well. Whoa, Ronda Rousey's... Apparently she won that one, so I was wrong. Okay, I was wrong. Uh, 
Yeah, I don't need to explain myself any further. This this guy explains everything right there in the way that you want him to. And he tells it how it is too, just like Wrestling Jesus, just like JD from New York. You know, the guy who does this off the script podcast. That's another thing I like. Guys like him and and Wrestling Jesus and Sean's View Entertainment. I think that they're the lifeblood of the wrestling community, and especially in terms of fans. I mean, not that wrestling is wrestling anymore, it's been more sports entertainment than wrestling for the last 35 years, but still, I mean, this guy's legit. Check out his stuff, honest to God, seriously. Yeah, seriously. And now I'd like to give my honest review on very shite YouTubers, in particular the Paul brothers, Jake and Logan, you know, those guys are absolute shitbags. I mean, they post videos of themselves discovering a body in a suicide forest in Japan, and and they just... They think they can get away with everything, but they can't! Because God won't let them! What the fuck, man? God damn! You kidding me? And just... Dude! And, and, and what, about, what about this guy named Waffle Pond who, along with his brother Steven, post videos of themselves reenacting greatest freakouts ever? Right. And, 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 and here's the thing, here's the thing, here's the thing. Everything that this kid does, and his brother, they get famous for it. I mean, you know, they get famous for it, for no reason whatsoever, just because it's genuine. Because it's genuine. It's all genuine. By the way, Am I famous yet? I shut the remote up my ass. Am I famous yet? Y you know, I I'm, I'm painting! Hey, look, look, I'm painting something with my mom's stolen paintbrushes! Am I famous yet? Fuck off. You gotta be fucking kidding me. What is it? I'll be, I'll be right back. I, I gotta go out. Okay, I'm done. I'm done. I'm freaking out. You think crazy? Yeah, what about... What about... I'll, I'll take, for instance... You know... I really, really... I don't think I have to explain it any further at this point, because, you know, PewDiePie. I mean, I like, I like the fact that this guy did Happy Wheels commentary videos, but as, as far as him having the biggest fan base in YouTube's history, he has like, he has enough subscribers to where he can literally actually be the president of his own nation like literally he's got 70 million followers i mean you, you could you could call this country of his the united states of pewdiepie or pewdiepiestan or pewdiepiestan or whatever the hell 
and he'd still be the president of it every time. Because, I mean, when, you, when you're when you that famous a YouTuber and you've got that big of a fan base, it's like you're the president of the United States, except you're not Donald Trump. Everything you do isn't all peachy clean like Donald Trump, because he hasn't done a single thing wrong except maybe two or three things throughout his entire presidency. That's why I voted for him in 2016, because he's the only candidate, then and now, that actually lives up to what he says he's going to do. And he makes sure of it every single day, and he gets so much shit for it just for being the right guy for the job and doing the right thing because we the people tell we're supposed to tell the government what to do they're not supposed to tell us what to do it's supposed to be the other way around we're supposed to tell them what to do and then you have people like like Fauzi tube and Joey salads and Jacob Sartorius and 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 all these other hated YouTubers and clickbaiters who who want to troll you with their endless streams of bullshit on a silver fucking platter. It doesn't work. You understand? It doesn't work ever. Not even in hell. God. It's like I stepped into the fucking twilight zone and all of a sudden I'm Rod Serling's descendant from another planet. What the hell? Good lord. I don't even know how to respond to that. I mean, it just... Mm. But then, 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 Alright, let's just... Alright, so Jacob Sartorius, this, this guy makes, yeah, he just does, <laughs> he does pop music, not, not that it matters or anything, but I mean, that's why he uses autotune and I don't, unless I absolutely have to, so, that's why you use autotune and I don't, oh, it's gonna do it, bye bye. See you in the next go round. Later. You can go now. Bye. Si quelne si te gusta lo que ves. No es tan difícil. Y solo we quiere un cli. Follow me if you like what you see. It's not that hard. And it only requires one click. Done. Jesus Christ. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, coming straight to you from the land of wasted opportunities, it's Kevin the Skull Anderson with another episode right here on YouTube.com. This is Scully Goes Wild. How are you, man? Now then, you are not going to believe the shit that I have for you today. Yeah, that's what they say. Now, enter the case of a woman, or lack thereof, clearly supported Hillary Clinton in 2016 and Obama twice in 08 and 12 respectively, who gets into a car with an Uber driver and proceeds to pretty much poke the bear. Of course, you know what I'm talking about because you saw the video on your local news station several years ago, as well as the animated short by this guy named Zach, who has a YouTube channel, by the way, with over a million subscribers. Of course, let's talk about the woman who couldn't stop 
poking the bear. Because every time she started to poke the bear, the bear would scream louder and louder. Yeah, man, let's get to it. It's a wide shot! Nothing! You need about the story of a woman named Jotchi80. That's J-O-T as in Jot, C-E as in CeeLo Green, and the number 80. You know, woman, you're a real piece of shit. You know that? You make Hillary Clinton look like Jesus Christ in comparison. Now, this woman made the unfortunate decision to become a living meme with every breath that she takes from that point after by posting a video on July the 7th, 2016 about a quote, hostile Uber driver who refuses to take her to the ER. Well, you were at your destination you knew where administration was, but you didn't give a shit about it. Why? Because you're selectively retarded, that's why! You are the reason why we have abortion clinics. You are the reason why Donald Trump is president and Hillary Clinton isn't. And don't tell me it's not because you suck the donkey's dick, because that's exactly what it is, because that's exactly what you do every day, you suck the donkey's dick. Yeah. Just a minute. You can't make this shit up. It's impossible. You cannot make this shit up. How is it possible? <laughs> oh my god. Oh god. I can't even. I can't, man. This is. Yeah, let, let's let's play that video in its entirety, huh? The whole three minute fucking thing! Ah! It is out of my car now! Where is it? It's out of my car now! Sir, I'm asking you! It's out of my car now! I have the right to tell you when to get out of my car I right have, now. I don't know where I am. I'm asking you where is my destination. If you will kindly point I know what where your destination I am. is. To your destination. It said here I was at your destination. It's over. Get out of my car now. It said 17. Get out of my car now. Sir, it said. Get out of my car now. Why are you yelling at me? Because you won't fucking get out of my car. Thank you. But you're not to yell at me. You are not to yell at me. One. Do it. Do it. Do it. <laughs> Get out of my car. Where is my destination? Get out of my car. Sir, can you just tell Get me? Get out of my goddamn car. Now. Sir, can you please tell me where my destination is? I don't Can you please tell me where my destination is? The ride is over. You have been extremely rude, extremely condescending. How this whole have thing. I been Thank you. extremely rude? You kept me waiting way too long. You showed up and told me you were in a hurry when you showed no actual effort to be in a hurry. Get out of my Thank you, Uber Get driver. Out of my car now. I don't know where I am. Get out of my car now. God damn you to hell. Sir. Get out of my car. I am asking Get out of my car! It is my fucking goddamn property! Exactly, get out. it's his property. Just no. get out of the damn car. No! You are facing Get out very... right fucking now! You are facing Get very... out of my car! I'm facing a fucking moron! Get out! No! You're facing the... No! 
You have no right to scream at me. I will fucking talk to you any goddamn way I want. Really? Yes, I fucking will. And I have the right. And you figure that out by now, woman? Scream at me? Get out of my car! You have the right to scream at me. I have asked you to leave my car multiple times. And Get I am car. asking you in a Get very out of my car. manner. Where am I? You're at a hospital. Where, Where? you need to be. Oh! <laughs> Please. Yeah, I'll get her out of your car Where for you. Where is the emergency room? On the other side? Get out of my car! Exactly. You see, people? This is why we have abortion clinics. To prevent shitheads like her from having existed in the first god dang place. And now you know why I keep getting messages on my computer from Uber! Because they won't stop asking me to work for them knowing that I don't have a driver's license or a fucking car! The fuck did you expect? Honestly. You know, woman, you constantly badgering the man to take you to a destination that you already arrived at some three days or four days or however the hell long before. Do you realize how stupid you looked in that video? By the way, I hope to hell that you're watching this lady. Because when you watch this video, by the way, I'm going to be roasting your ass for the rest of this video. A good 21 more minutes or so. I forget how long. I don't keep track of the time anymore. But let me tell you something. Jotcha 80 whoever the hell you are, you got 2 million views for a video that you scripted where you egged on a friendly Uber driver who completely lost his shit because you wouldn't FUCKING GET OUT OF THIS CAR! You cannot write this shit! Not even in hell! Which I believe is relocated to Hollywood as of now. And let's face it people, Hollywood is hell. It is absolute hell. I'm telling you people, to be completely straight up, I'm not going to lie about it. This woman is a real work. A facade. People should not be allowed. There should be a law prohibiting people to exhibit these levels of stupidity. You understand? The punishment that they should receive for displaying such levels of stupidity is to get knocked the fuck out by the person that they're egging on by the bear that they're poking in this case the woman should have gotten similarly punished by someone around her specifically the driver who asked her countless times rhetorically to get out of his car now you cannot write this shit people you cannot write this shit What else do I say about this? Oh, I've got a million of them! Yeah! I don't think it's necessary for me to explain to you the cringe that you've just now been a witness to within that three minute video that I've just now exposed to you, which by the way, which by the way was also re-uploaded by a man named Matt Tilderton, all one world, Matt Tilderton, 
the week after Joe Chiedi initially published this on her YouTube channel. This one got nearly twice as many views as the initial video which just a week before was published. And that's because of a very incriminating description which simply says this Uber driver gets really angry at a passenger who refuses to get out of the car. Exactly! Yeah! Woo! <laughs> yeah! Yeah! My thoughts exactly. My thoughts exactly. You cannot make this up. You, you can't. How the hell can you? I mean, I think this this dumbass woman wouldn't get out of the fucking guy's car. Can can you explain that? I mean, you gotta be a June bug in the middle of Christmas in July not to know that. You know how dumb a person like that has to be to be a June bug in the middle of Christmas in July? Pretty damn stupid. Democratic levels are stupid. By the way, I said earlier in this video about maybe two minutes ago as of this video just skip about two minutes backward to the clip in which I said that but you remember when I said that there should be a law prohibiting these levels of deliberate selective stupidity well I meant every word that I said because it is absolutely 100% the truth. It's so, and, and, and this guy's repost from a week after the video was published gets nearly 27 and a half thousand comments. One of the top ones being from a man who I am obviously going to admire now named Beer Splits. This, I don't even know if it's a guy or a girl, but I don't know. I mean, I could be right, I could be wrong, 50-50. But this person says, They say she is still in the car. 23 people responded to that. And 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 I'll, I'll tell you what they said. I'll tell you what they said. Tell you what they said, and I'll just... To this very day, say that this man named Piccolo touched the car, and the car exploded, causing them both to die. Bulldog Blitz die. Let my ass off. So say that still that man. I'm not even going there. If you go into the car, you can hear the sound of where is my destination? Don't judge that man. Yet yeah, that bitch would probably do something more before she filming this when she when he already angry. Bitch, you in the fucking hospital. You wanted to drive through a fucking emergency room for you? Bitch, please. Ah! Oh, look, satanic reference from Brandon Alejandro Carnejo Flores. I'm waiting for 660 likes to comment. Then he commented. Duh. Pretty simple. Yeah, it's just, it's, it's pretty simple. Pretty straightforward. You cannot even in hell script these levels of stupidity they're everywhere liberalism isn't just a mental disorder it's selective retardation which is exactly what god himself put me into this world to save us all from or as many of us as physically fucking possible i don't know anymore but I will say this. This lady deserves an Oscar for the most oblivious fucking piece of shit in a short subject film. And the guy who's the Uber driver should get an Academy Award for the best supporting actor in a short subject film.
This is us. This is this is award worthy material right here. Honest to God. That's why so many people have been sharing it. Not to mention the fact that the guy named Zach who goes under the YouTube handle Psychic Pebbles posted his own animated shortened version of this, which was missing about a minute or so of the original audio and video. And he includes in his description that the following audio is 100% real yeah no shit no shit of course it's real like five million people saw the damn thing so they know they know okay what else can I say about this what in the hell do I say about a video of this level of cringe? Wait, I know! CONSENSUAL PENIS! I don't even care, man. Fuck. Bottoms down. By the way, Nickelback is the most overrated rock band in history. Spread the word, people! And now back to the topic. This lady. Oh, by the way, by the way, there is a Reddit article on this very same story, which I'm going to look up right now. Now let's take a look at this. What is the actual story behind Get Out of My Car? Explain this. Okay, so this this user named Izzy Alex Alexanderish came up with this story, which I think sums up this entire review in a nutshell. This lady called an Uber to go to a hospital. According to the driver, she was late to the appointment and made him wait way too long. So she gets to the hospital and drives to admissions and asks her to get out. She says that she wants to go to the emergency room entrance, not admissions. He says all she asked for was for the hospital and that he is at the destination that she has wasted enough of his time and to please get out of his car. Over and over again she refused and the guy gets frustrated and starts proceeding to yell at her over and over again. Finally about two to three minutes of her being a troll and saying stuff like, But sir, I don't know where I am. He threatens to call the police. At this point, someone she knows, a bystander possibly, comes up to the car and tells her that he or she will walk her to the location she needs. The story blew up because of how much the Uber driver freaks out, yelling at her, etc. I think they were both partly in the- no, they weren't in the wrong, not both of them. The lady was entirely in the wrong for having wasted the man's time. I agree with everything else, however. But it must be frustrating to be an Uber driver and not be able to remove someone from your personal car, especially if they are being an asshole. Edit. Rewatching the video, by the way, this is not a shock to you, so you shouldn't be surprised by this. It looks like she edited it from the point that he started to lose his patience. You can tell that her voice indicates that she is smiling, trying to push his buttons to get a good video, which is a pretty shitty thing to do. Which renders the statement, I think that they were both partly in the wrong, completely useless. 
As far as everything else that this Redditor said, I completely agree with her. And this was posted a little over six months ago. So you try and explain that to your kids, if you ever choose to have any in this case. I don't even know why the hell I have to explain a story like this to you people, but I do it anyway for the sake of doing it to make sure that you don't end up as dumb as her. And by her, I mean Joel G80. Joel C80, or whatever the hell she's called. Right? Or Jot G80. Because I keep, I keep mistaking the T for the L when I'm reading her name. Well, of course, I didn't read her name the last couple of times, so obviously. But anyway, it's pretty much going to do it. I don't know how else to say it. So I'm just going to shut the fuck up. So, till next time. It is time once again! Until next time, I'll see you in cyberspace. This episode of Scully Goes Wide is brought to you by Uber, where if you allow them to pester you long enough, you can become one of their drivers and deal with shitheads like the woman whose video I just reviewed in this episode. And it's also been sponsored by the Corporation for Public Broadcasting, the No Child Left Behind Act, not that it means anything, and suckers like you! So do us all a favor, and if you don't like my content, Go watch PewDiePie and fuck off to him. Later! <laughs> Idiots. Just a bunch of mindless pussy ass fucks. These Democrats be like, ah, fuck you! Idiots. Fuck you! That's what all the Dems be like. <laughs> And I'm gonna start this episode of Spot the Liberal with, guess who? You're never gonna believe this. A jackass Democrat named Bill Nelson who admits in a secret recording that he fabricated the claim that Russians penetrated the Florida election systems in 2018. Which, by the way, was proven to be bullshit. Listen to this. What I said last week was exactly the letter, what the letter states. <laughs> and that letter went to every supervisor of election in Dude. Florida, plus Dude. to the Florida Division of Elections. Bullshit. Bullshit. And what that letter says is... Bullshit. In essence, it would be foolish to think if no, it's the full of shit. were in our election apparatus in Florida in 2016, and that has now been twice documented. Bullshit. First of all, it was documented by the Senate Intelligence Committee report on the 16 election that they were in. Yes, and we right. again when Robert Mueller indicted the 12 Russian intelligence operator operatives ah. in his indictment papers. Uh, that they were in for. Yeah. It would be foolish to think that if they were in the election records in uh, 2016, uh, that they are not continuing. So, what has happened is this has gotten political. So certain political public figures have taken that and tried to use it for partisan political purposes.
I don't want about Chuck Schumer, that piece of shit that he is. Listen to this dumbass. Listen to him. Higher GDP, more jobs, reduced deficit. Who could oppose that? I don't know of anybody. I know of somebody who would oppose that. You! You get the picture, right? Fuck off. Ladies and gentlemen, it's Christian Left Depreciation Night here at Stop the Liberal, ladies and gentlemen. It's a little big shit, wife's after of the day, royal flush of the day, all in one shot. Let me tell you about this progressive so-called Christian Twitter channel called the Christian Left. These are the same people that say, If y'all a church preachers that Donald John Trump is chosen by God to save us, we strongly recommend you find another church. Nothing but the hack technique. That's all they're good at. That's all they've ever done. The hack technique, right? You know, hope and change. It's basically hack without the K. You know, this this whole fucking... God, I, I can't even... <laughs> What the fuck is wrong with these people for thinking in a post like that would be even half as truthful as they think it is? What in the fuck is wrong with these people? You know, you know these people over here at the Christian left, they preach the gospel, they preach the King James, but they vote Democrat! So it negates everything that they're trying to teach. And, and what about... Hold on. Okay, okay. Alright. I'm going to look up the Christian left on Twitter, ladies and gents. On Twitter. That is right. I'm going to look up the Christian left on Twitter. Yeah. Let's see how many dumbass followers they have. How many dumbasses follow these people? Because I'd, I'd like to know. I would really, really love to know at this point. Because personally, I do not even care. And I'm just being real. <laughs> oh, God. 8,000 people follow them? What the fuck? Oh my god! Oh my god, I can't. I'm done. Oh my god, yeah. Yeah, that's just one account. That's just one account. And, and, and check this. Oh! Oh! <laughs> oh god! Oh, I gotta check these people out. You mean to tell me? That 19,700 dumbasses follow the Christian left? Oh my god! <laughs> oh my god, man! What the fuck is wrong with you 19.7 thousand people? To follow... A progressive so-called Christian channel that's not even Christian because it votes Democrat! I bet the Christian left are the same group of people who voted for Hillary Clinton in 2016 and Obama in 2008. Along with the 69.5 million retarded dumbasses before them. Oh my god, man. <laughs> Oh my god, man, you can't, you cannot make this up, I swear. There is no way you can make this up. A retard with Down Syndrome would be smarter than those idiots, let me tell you. And that guy had to testify before Congress and tell them 
that his life is worth living. You know that when a retard can stump all the Democrats in Congress with just my words, a mentally retarded person with Down syndrome, in just five words, can stump an entire Democratic Party, you know your party's in deep shit, as well as your channel. You know people of the Christian left, you follow this channel because you want to be like them, you want to be a part of the problem. This is why I abandoned the Christian faith in almost its entirety to begin with. Because of bullshit like this. There is a post, a journal that I made on my fur affinity. Well, it's, it's not really my fur affinity. It's more the fur affinity account of a bunch of characters that I created within a universe that I created, a parallel universe specifically. See, I'm going to be working on another series of books completely unrelated to the Bronwyn Chronicle saga, but in a way that depicts a futuristic landscape some, some 400 or so years from this point. And I'm just being reasonable now. I'm just being completely honest. You, you want me to be real with you, right? It's time to get real, folks! The Christian left is wrong! But the Christian right is right! You know, these people call themselves the Christian left. Well, I call myself the Christian right. Because I'm right, and they're wrong. End of story. You lose, you fuckers. Bye-bye! Ha-ha-ha! <laughs> Motherfuckers. And, and by the way, this is the same progressive, jackass, Democrat, so-called Christian channel. They're not true Christians, by the way. You're following a fraud! You're following a fraud, ladies and gentlemen. A fraud! Let me, let me explain something to you, okay? If a Christian channel has part of its username indicating the word left on it, chances are they're not really Christians. They're just Democrats posing as Christians. I'll give you an example. Now, one thing that I will agree with is the fact that the entire Catholic Church and the entirety of the Vatican are full of faggots and pedophiles. They are so full of faggots and pedophiles, it's practically unbelievable. Like that case in Pennsylvania, where so many hundreds of so-called ordained Catholic priests covered up a child sex ring, a pedophilia ring, a pedophile ring, basically. You understand? You know what they called it? They called it deplorable, horrific, unchristian, and sinful. This was, I believe, on August the 15th. But the day before, they posted two tweets. And you're never going to believe me when I tell you this. But, they're the, but the Christian left, this, the people in charge of the Twitter handle, the Christian left, are also just as much a part of the Catholic Church as the Catholic Church and the Vatican themselves. But the day before, get this, they side with a disgraced Negro, she's not a black woman, she's a Negro, who obviously took advantage of the situation that she was in for all the wrong reasons, despite having the best job in the world working for Trump. And what does she do? She sells him down the drain, and General John Kelly has to fire her right then and there, politely, if you will. He did it as politely as could be, and I think he did it right. I think he did the right thing by firing her, her dumbass. And you know what's funny? 
she accuses Trump of using the N-word, and then she leaks a recording of it. Of course, she supposedly edited the thing. I'm probably going to go out on a limb and speculate, because I'm, I'm pretty sure she edited the whole thing. In fact, I'm absolutely confident of it. I am so sure of it that I would sell my father's grave if I were proven wrong. Because that is how sure I am that she edited the recording to make Trump sound like he said the nigger word. You know the word nigger, right? People use that around every day to, to bash their less fortunate ethnic counterparts. And yet their ethnic counterparts are guilty of using that very same word in about 90% of all the R&B and rap songs that they produce. How ironic is that? Comedic irony, folks! And I'm not even racist. I'm just pointing out the facts. Okay, get this, get this. Also, on that very same day, the day before they posted that, mainly the one that talks about the Catholic Church child sex ring, they call Donald Trump a narcissistic man-child. He's such a narcissistic man-child. Well, you're starting to sound like one, the Christian left. And you wonder why I'm not a Christian anymore. Because of bullshitters like you, who claim to be Christians, but side with... Your democracy, remember, this isn't our democracy, this isn't my democracy, this is your democracy. You made this. You turned America into a shithole by voting Obama, and Clinton, and Nixon, and Jackson. Obviously, that would be Andrew, because not Michael, so that would be stupid. Why would, Andrew, why would Michael Jackson ever be president when we also know that another guy named Jackson, first name Andrew, was responsible for the near extinction and genocide of the entire indigenous ethnicity in America? People, listen to me. No, no, no. no. Listen to me! The Christian left are frauds! And 19,700 of you blindly follow and buy into their bullshit. What's the point? Please, I'm begging you, explain it to me. <laughs> I swear to God, man. You people are the dumbest people on earth to follow a so-called Christian Twitter channel that also has the word left in his name, which obviously indicates that they're Democrats. Democrats, as I've mentioned, are the worst people in the history of humanity. All they do is obstruct, 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 fuck people over, obstruct, 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 sex ring, obstruct, 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 capitalism, obstruct, obstruct, obstruct. You understand? That's all they do. Fake news. They fuck people over, quite literally. They raise your taxes and expect you to like it and smile. But yet the only people that are smiling are us. People like me, who actually give a shit about telling you these truths. Now you listen to me, people. I want you to listen to me, but good. If you so happen to come across a leftist Christian channel, please, 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 for the love of fuck, block them! And keep in mind, you don't have to do this. I'm just suggesting this to you. Because at this point, it's completely optional as to whether or not you want to take my advice. You don't have to, but it would be very, very nice if you did. Let's continue on with our fucking 
rant on the Christian love. Possibly the worst Christian channel in all of social media. Let me tell you something. I do not give a shit about the prosperity preachers appointed by Rothschild because they are the problem. As is the entire Catholic Church, the entire Vatican, the entire Democratic Party, and half of all Republicans too, because they don't have a spine and they won't grab enough balls to fucking speak the truth as I do on a daily basis. I'm basically the Jim Cornette of autism, essentially. Go figure, huh? To think that I compare myself to a liberal like Jim Cornette. I mean, at least Jim Cornette is honest about it. At least he's honest. Every other liberal, every other Democratic supporter will lie to you, but Jim Cornette, despite his political affiliation, is the JFK of our time. He might be a liberal, but damn it, he speaks the truth. And when he speaks the truth, everything he says is right. We need more people like him, and less people like Omarosa, or the Christian left, or John McCain, or Dick Durbin, or Nancy Pelosi, or Kamala Harris. We need less people like that. We need more people like myself who are willing to speak the God's honest truth. No matter what. It is logic. It's logic, people. Let's continue on with this roast. This epic roast for the fucking ages. Let me, let me explain some to you people, okay? I'm going to tell you now. The Christian left is a progressive, democratic, nasty, so-called channel under the guise of Christianity. It is nothing more than cannon fodder for the great Oculus democracy. That's all it is. And you know, there are very few things that I agree with them on. Very, very few things. But this first tweet that you see above you, right there on the top, that says that church isn't a museum for good people and that it's a hospital for the broken, I actually agree with that. Because many of the people that go to church that want to mend their broken spirits, what do they do immediately after the service? They go home and they resume their simple ways of denying the existence of God, which is what Joel Osteen and his mega church wants all his people to do. Because they blaspheme God on a daily basis. It's ridiculous. It's pointless, it's ridiculous, and it's absolutely absurd. And yet, they want to post shit posts like this. Guess, guess what? I'll give you a few examples. I have four of them right here. I'll start from left to right. These are the same so-called Christian people on the Christian left to say that in a hundred years Hillary Clinton will be viewed as a trailblazer and an American hero in the history books. Yeah, maybe in Rothschild's history books, but sure as hell not mine. If anything, she's nothing more than a Ponzi schemer and a deliberate Madoff scammer of epic proportions. Not even Madoff and Ponzi themselves could compare to her. And get this, these, These are also the same people that accuse Trump of destroying economic growth with a trade war. Since when? Since fucking when? Okay, explain this to me. How is Trump destroying economic growth when this quarter alone he's responsible for over a 4% GDP increase? Yeah. yeah, people are going to say that that was Obama, but obviously not. Yeah. That's hilarious. See, 
my brother knows what he's talking about. He understands the situation more than just about anybody else I know. He knows how bad Obama did as president. And had Obama not been president, had McCain been president, we probably wouldn't have gotten much better. So it was either we get a jackass or we get a Democrat. And a jackass. Obviously. These are the same people on the Christian left on Twitter that say that America is preparing for a Nazi attack. Which... No, the Democrats do. The Trumps... The Trumpster always looks out for his people, meaning us. He looks out for the small person. He looks out for those, those that are less fortunate, namely us. He doesn't look out for Democrats at all because he can't trust them farther than he can throw them. Democrats are complete patsies to the great conspiracy of oculism and Satanism incarnate. And yet the Christian left want to say that this is what they meant by great again? These are the same people that want to believe a man named Andrew First Class Cunt Cuomo who says that America was never really that great. Exactly. These are the same people in the Christian left on their Twitter channel that say that the entire Trump era has been a festering pit of barely disguised ongoing corruption. Actually, the entire George H.W. Clinton, W. Bush, and Obama administrations were the festering pits of barely disguised ongoing corruption. And the whole sordid era has not had a 20-year period quite like the orgy of criminality which was the presidencies of George H.W., Bill Clinton, George W. Bush, and Barack Hussein Obama, a.k.a. Barry Sotoro, a.k.a. Barry I shit the bed, Obama. Because reasons. And his middle name shares the last name of another often overlooked leader named Saddam Hussein, who, by the way, would have made a better president than Barack Obama ever could. See, this is, this is what I don't understand. The Christian, the Christian left calls themselves a Twitter channel just because they proclaim themselves as being Christian doesn't automatically mean that they're a Christian channel. Because if they have Democrat or Jackass or left in their name, they're obviously not true Christians. And they're little fucking young boys, exactly. All right. And you know, they have 19,700 followers on Twitter. What the fuck are these 19,700 people on? Are they on LSD? Are they on acid? Are they on cyanide? Well, they might as well be on cyanide because they committed suicide when they followed that channel, obviously. And you know what's funny about Peter Strzok's campaign on GoFundMe? His GoFundMe should be more like a go fuck yourself because 11,400 people were retarded enough to donate to this piece of shit. And they gave him $500,000 to pay off his attorneys, or lack thereof, to pay for their lavish lifestyles because they know, like we know, that he's obviously going to get the death sentence or life in prison one. And it's almost entirely likely to be the latter, not the former. I wish it would be the former, though, first. Yeah, but it's sizzling now. Right. Well, I guess you know why 
the Christian left isn't Christian at all. They just use the word Christian to disguise themselves under a mask of so-called Catholicism and false prosperity Christianity. Now you know why they suck. And just a reminder, this episode of Scully Goes Wide, well, it might as well be an episode of Scully Goes Wide because it's done in the style of another web show that has also gained a lot of traction, has been brought to you by Free Thought Project, who reminds you that free thinkers will always seem crazy to those who don't take the time to research that you should never apologize for evolving past people's comfort zone. And it's also been brought to you by the Corporation for Pubic Broadcasting. I mean public, public broadcasting. The Corporation for Public Broadcasting. But you already knew that. Which is made possible by suckers like you. Just a bunch of mindless pussy ass fucks. These Democrats be like, ah, fuck you! Idiots. Fuck you! That's what all the Dems be like. <laughs> ah, shit. Hi there, you cucks! Welcome to another episode of Scully Goes Wild! Okay, I'll stop. Now, the reason why I pulled up J.G. Wentworth's Wikipedia article is because today we're going to expose J.G. Wentworth for the fraud that he is. Which is why he hides behind his husbands, Randy Salieri, Dwight Perry, and Randy Parker. Well, well they're not really his husbands, but they might as well be because, he, because he's gay for Rothschild. Okay, according to Wikipedia, the J.G. Wentworth Company is a diversified financial services company focusing on providing direct-to-consumer access to financing solutions through a variety of avenues like mortgage lending, refinancing, structured settlement, annuities, lottery payment purchasing, home lending, prepaid cards, and access to providers of personal loans. And it's publicly traded on the OTCQX symbol JGWE. Do you find anything wrong with that? Well, you should, because the company is a bastard fraud! That's right, people. It's a fraud. <laughs> I just ruined all your childhood. <laughs> I have a structured settlement and I need cash now. You fuckers. Any of you that bought into that bullshit 12 years ago are likely still buying into it today like the fucking lemmings that you are. But the problem is... Most of you people don't even know better, because you choose not to. Now, before all this, it's my money and my needed now shit started, you could have just called them out for what they were. You could have just said, okay, you know what? You guys are full of shit. I don't care how catchy or annoying your jingles are. I'm not buying your product. And then they shoved It's My Money and My Need It Now and Wagnerian parody commercials down our throats so far down that they came out through our Agnes holes. And then, of course, we were stupid enough to buy it anyway because, of course, we are. Because reasons. You know why? Because J.G. Wentworth is J.G. Wentworthless. Hence the name of a Twitter user who I have since befriended, since discovering his Twitter feed. 
Anyway, it was founded in 1991 as a merchant bank specializing in transactions in healthcare. The following year, it began purchasing New Jersey's auto insurance deferrals from claimants who couldn't afford to wait a year to a year and a half for their settlements. Prior to the beginning of 2000, there was no state regulation for structured settlements in New York. Elliot Spitzer entered into a contract with JG to prevent New Yorkers from selling their settlements at exorbitant trades and rates. The agreement stipulated that JG could receive a rate of no more than 25% of the annual discount rate of annuities it had purchased from a citizen of the Bank of New York. Because it's not a snade, it's a bank now. Owned by Rothschild and Dynasty themselves. And Rockefeller, too. Now, a decade after that, following the financial crisis, Wentworthless's parent company, JGW Holdco LLC, entered bankruptcy, citing liquidity problems amid a tightening credit market at the catalyst for filing. In June of that year, JGW received $100 million in equity from primary stakeholder JLL Partners, which allowed the company and its subsidiaries to undeservedly emerge from bankruptcy. This is because we had a nigger from Kenya who's also a communist Muslim jihadist terrorist for president at that time. The reason why I say he's a nigger is because he doesn't deserve to be called a black person or an African American. Because he was the worst politician this country has ever had. Which is the only reason why in 2011, J.G. and Peachtree formed a new holding company, continuing to operate independently following the transition. And then two years later, they filed for an initial public offering, which was offered the subsequent month in November of 2013. It was initially listed on the New York stock under the symbol JGWE. In 2015, they began expending their financial offerings to purchase West Star for $54 million in common shares and cash. Keep in mind, they had blown through over half of what they were given to emerge from bankruptcy at that point. In the same year, they also announced a partnership with Visa to offer a prepaid card to customers. Next year, in June of 2016, it was delisted from the New York Stock Exchange for failing to satisfy the continued listing rule. Later that month, the company began trading on the OTC Markets Group under the JW A fuck JGWE symbol. Aren't you glad I corrected myself? On November the eighth, two thousand seventeen, JG Wentworth filed again for bankruptcy. And it plummeted to less than half a penny a share two days later. It has been expected to emerge from bankruptcy again this year, in 2018. In fact, it was supposed to have done so eight months ago, but the only reason why it hasn't is because everybody knows how full of shit they are. Because they cannot come to an agreement with lenders prior to filing. It's probably because they have none left. <laughs> What a bunch of dumbasses! In the United States, the company is known for its television adverts featuring Mr. Wentworth! But more recent commercials have included parodies of Wagnerian operas. Obviously, because of course it does. Because they don't know what else to do with their money!
That's why they're broke. That's why they've been bankrupt twice in a decade. And, by the way, by the way, you remember me telling you about the Twitter user, JG Wentworthless. Well, you're in fucking luck, people, because I'm going to show them to you now, huh? Would you like that? Yeah, let's get started. <laughs> oh my god. Woo. Oh man. I love this guy. Oh. Oh man. Yeah. <laughs> oh god. Now, now this is the first. This is the first tweet of mine. No, actually, no. This isn't my tweet. This is the first tweet that I discovered of JG went worthlesses, which caught my attention and helped me expose them for the Ponzi schemers that they fucking are. I'm thankful that you filed in bankruptcy. You screwed over my cousin in Maryland. Say. How many customers are you going to unethically consume this Thanksgiving? Your company is broke. How are you going to buy anything? Who bought a surprise for you? Your creditors? J.G. Wentworth. What the fuck happened to your company? Your stock is worth half a pay. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit! Oh man! <laughs> I should probably play the Wagnerian opera commercial of J.G. Wentworths just to spite their asses. <laughs> How about that, huh? Oh my god! Let's just play that fucking bit, huh? Let's play. It. <laughs> Settlement and I need cash now. Call J.G. Wentworth, 877 Cash Now. I have an annuity, but I need cash now. Call J.G. Wentworth, there's hell no one that won't help you to. One lump sum of shit, they won't fund for you. One lump sum of cash, they will pay to you. Get long-term payments, but you need cash now. Call J.G. Wentworth, Eight seven seven cash now. 877 cash now. 877 cash now. 877 cash now. It's my favorite line. It's your money. Use it when you need it. Yeah, but it's not our money. Because you stole it from us, you fuck. You stole it from us. No wonder your stock is worth half a penny. The fuck happened, man? I, no, on second thought, I'll tell you what happened. Your people fucked us over, and now you're bankrupt for the second time in a decade. Good fucking luck getting out of that one. Yeah. Also, just out of spite, I'm probably going to play that other most annoying commercial, which, which I featured on my list of top five most annoying commercials ever. Of course, Head On was a very, very distant second compared to the Wagnerian opera commercial, of which I just played for you now. But of course, you know that because reasons. All right. Let's play that bastard commercial. On second thought, hell, every time you hear someone say, it's my money and I need it now, take a shot of whiskey, or double whiskey, or triple whiskey, or quadruple whiskey, or whatever the hell. Seriously. You know how many times the phrase, it's my money and I need it now, is used just in that advert, just in that minute-long advert? 
I'd have to say at least 15 times. At least! <laughs> oh. oh my god. And yet Hollywood wants to do a movie based on this fucking Ponzi scheme of a company. You know, th this scheme is so fucking stupid, they should call it the J.G. Wentworth scheme. Okay, I've got a few other tweets of what you see right here that I'm going to feature right now. From Gracie Peck, the 2nd of December, 2017. Hey, J.G. Wentworth, how many people in the United States actually have a stretch of sentiment? I literally think there may be four, so cool it on the advertising. Thanks. From Matt Infantino. 8th of December, 2017. One day, I'm going to buy J.G. Wentworth just to drive it into the ground so I never have to hear that awful jingle again. And that's what happens when you waste $14 million each quarter on pointless commercials which contributed entirely and most likely to their second bankruptcy in 10 years. I'm not making this shit up, people. I'm being honest with you. You need to know this. You cannot continue to live as a human being if you don't allow yourself to know this. Because if you don't allow yourself to know this, you've automatically given up your right to be a human. By default. From another Twitter friend of mine, Sarah Davis. I ask this question every time I see the commercials for the pill to correct non-circadian rhythm disease in blind people. Well, you don't say. Should I read again Matt Infantino's original reply as well as the response by J.G. Went Worthless? You want me to do that? Really? All right. One day I'm going to buy J.G. Wentworth just to drive it into the ground so I never have to hear the awful jingle again. It's okay, Matt. They're doing it for themselves. Idiots had to file bankruptcy for the second damn time in a decade because they throw them away money for the stupid commercials. Dumbasses. If the... Oh, fuck. We actually have... Some replies from the fraud himself, J.G. Wentworth, also known as Mr. Wentworth. Okay, okay. One day, I'm going to buy J.G. Wentworth just to drive it into the ground so I never have to hear their awful jingle again. Or you could just change the commercials. J.G. Wentworth. <laughs> About time you file for bankruptcy. Cooking folks just to prey on the weak. What a joke. What a fucking joke. If the ROI wasn't positive, we would have stopped airing the spots ages ago. Bullshit! Why are you in bankruptcy? You can't even fuck yourself as you sleep. <laughs> the fuck is wrong with you people? Oh, man. <laughs> oh, I can't, man. I'm dead. <laughs> oh. Eight, seven, seven, just no. Eight, seven, seven, just no. Eight, seven, seven, just no. 
It's your money. Use it when you need it. Except it's not our money. And we don't need it because it's tainted. It's monopoly money. It's worthless, man. Don't you get the picture? <laughs> oh my god. And and then here here is here is the here is the one that that just fucking cuts the shit right here. The one on the bottom center of your screen. JG Wentworth. Need cash now? Use it when you need it. I spoke to your trustee. I mean, yo, daddy. If the ROI wasn't positive, we would have stopped airing the spots ages ago. Bullshit. Why are you in bankruptcy? <laughs> I spoke to your trustee. I mean, yo, daddy. Daddy. Daddy Rob Child. My company's broke again for the second time in a decade. I need more money! And I need now! You went worth cash now? You fucking shit. My money and I need it now! Are you absolutely fucking shit? My money and I need it now! Oh my god. <laughs> my money and I need it now! Oh man! <laughs> if you need cash now, JG Wentworth can help. JG Wentworth, or how not to run an insurance company for complete fucking faggot retards. You give me my money because it's mine. Because I just have to say that. Somebody has to say it. And if nobody else is going to say it, then I might as well. The call is free, and there's by no the way, obligation. By the way, J.G. Wentworth was his Twitter icon. It's, it's a guy it's named J.G. Wentworth who's showing all his cover flags. He's got empty pockets. I don't care whose pocket. <laughs> I know who did it. Get the pocket. <laughs> <laughs> it's my money. Oh, and I need it man. Now. But, but wait, Fucking there's God. more. Okay, now these people asked some really retarded questions, and I'm going to answer them for you right now. Okay, first question. How does J.G. Wentworth work? It doesn't. Absolutely no, it doesn't. But since you asked so nicely, I'll tell you how it works. They fuck you up the ass, fuck you up the ass, and see your finances driven before you. That's how it works. They fuck you up the ass. Second question. Is J.G. Wentworth's offer really worth it? Well, I'll let the butler from Fresh Prince, I believe his first real name is Jeffrey, but we'll let him answer that for you. No. <laughs> I mean, not that it needed to be turned out, but whatever, right? Okay. J.G. Boy. American Dreams. Dreams with a Z. Except it's JG boys. And they won a spot for the shot national competition to create a JG Wentworth jingle. Great! Now let's hope they all die of drug overdoses, Carrie Fisher style. World's biggest boy band, the JG Boys, because faggots and no lifers buy into the great Wentworth scam known as the shot for the spot. And only faggots and no lifers. Nobody else are gonna buy into it. Nobody. Except faggots and no lifers. And if you don't like that, you can suck my dick. Right? Ah. You know, I can't even I can't even express to you how fucking sad 
the story of JG one with this. It's like they want to pay attention to wars. So they spend like fifty billion dollars on commercials that they can't afford. And shove them down your fucking throats so far down that it comes right out of your anus holes. Right? Ah. Oh. Like a badly made chorizo with extra cheese and Bengay sauce to boot. Ugh. I so hope I'm 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 gonna I'm just gonna say this. I so desperately hope that the people who bought into the JG Wentworth scam in the first place get their heads out of their dicks and cunts long enough to understand that it doesn't fucking work! It doesn't work! <laughs> I swear to God, man. Oh. Yeah. That's gonna do it. Holy shit, that is not good. You said it. And we can definitely agree on that. Hey, we'll see you next time. Stop letting your dog sit here, you bastard! Please. Just a bunch of mindless pussy ass fucks. Never trust me like that. Ah, don't you! Idiots. Don't you! 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 Don't I thought when I was looking through the worst video games of all time that Atari's version of E.T., which was done by a man in only a five-week deadline because it had to be released by Christmas, was the worst video game ever. But then I saw the gameplay for another game which came out nearly 20 years after that, and it made me question everything. As you know, Shrek is a movie franchise that has spawned four movies and at least three, to my count, TV specials. And believe you fucking me, at least two of them were really, really bad. And the other two were really, really good. And and you know what's funny, man? They had to they had to come up with this game called Shrek Extra Large. I'll have a Shrek Extra Large with a double decker Tourette's guy and a small penis to go, please. What the fuck? Ah. <sighs> but anyway. Here to help me review this are two people who I consider really, really good YouTubers that are obviously much better than I am, albeit much more expensive in their filmmaking than I am, because I don't do this on a budget. I do this on absolutely zero budget. I do all my videos for free. But helping me review this piece of shit game is Peanut Butter Gamer, and pretty bad. I mean, not that it has to, not that it has to be pointed out or anything, but PewDiePie is the internet celebrity of the century, obviously. Of course, I would have Tourette's guy review this, but he'd probably say fuck all the time. But yeah, I think I think it would be better if Tourette's guy reviewed this. But anyway, let's let's get to this fucking shit, all right? Let's get to this whole damn shit right now. Starting with Shrek Extra Large's review from Peanut Butter Gamer. 
I have Shrek Extra Large. This game is not only very, very bad, and possibly the worst game I've ever played, it's so bad that it makes me upset, and that's actually the real me saying that. I'm, it makes me upset. It makes me upset that I have to sit here and talk about it. It makes me upset that I have to look through the footage and put it up on the screen so you can look at it. And I don't like the way this guy says cookies. Cookies! I don't like the way this troll thing looks either. I don't like the way the game lags all the time. I don't like how I have to fart in this cow's face in order to beat this level. And I don't like how Shrek burps all the time. <laughs> <laughs> There's something really upsetting about that. This game is the most unappealing form of media I've ever consumed. I was not even planning on putting it this at number one at first, oh, and then I played it, and the choice was made for me. Uh, I'm playing bad games because I think it. I can't fucking shit, man. What the fuck is this? What in the hell is this shit? Tell me what this is, damn it! What is this? Oh, one dollar, Drew. One dollar. One dollar. Fuck. Oh. Okay. Yeah. I'm gonna have a fun time reviewing this shit. Okay, if you'd take it away. Oh, we're playing Shrek Extra Large. This is actually a game. Like, I. I thought this was a fan-made game. <laughs> You're about to see what I'm talking about. So let's press start. Yep. My name is... Oh, sh well, all right. Well, we're playing with that then. What a wonderful loading screen. Use the C there we go. To change your view. Jesus. <laughs> Shrek, calm the fuck down. <laughs> this is my favorite trick game of all the time and play it every week. Hey chicken, how you doing? This is what you get for being a fucking chicken. Kids are so lucky with the games they get. Look at the sound effects for Shrek. Yeah. Come here chicken, I need to check your Holy anus. shit! That's this right. is bad. Beautiful booty hole. <laughs> Fuck you! What? What? Where you go? There you are. Oh my god. I could do this all day. Oh. Nice. <laughs> nice. Very nice Shrek. Shrek when he blazes it. <laughs> he goes from to. <laughs> oh, nice! Jesus Christ! I love this game already. This is my new favorite game. <laughs> they don't make games like these anymore, do they? <laughs> Hi, chicken. I love you. Chicken, where are you going? Oh, chicken, chicken. Hey, that loves you. Well there we go. Done. Oh my God! Combat arena. He's gonna fuck me, isn't he? Right, what? The what the fuck get is this? Get <laughs> <laughs> Great! Not I didn't hit him. Good work. Okay. I fingered his asshole. This can't be a real. Who <laughs> <laughs> published this? To fill your gas meter, <laughs> eat some of those. Oh my meter. God! There we go. Nine. Holy shit! Verb flames. Oh. Jesus. Oh my God! Who came up with this? Who came up with this? I hold his ass. <laughs> what the fuck? Like that. There we go. What, what oh boy, fuck? anyone who bought this game sure as hell won't be disappointed. Oh, well, this is my house. Oh my, my god. Alright, we're in this forest. Oh my god. Game over, uh, I just sit down and cry. Oh what god. Are bullies. <laughs> Too rich. Alright, sounds good to me. Cookies! Is so ugly. What the fuck do you want from me? You want cookies? cookies! Jesus Christ, you fucking perp. Stop molesting me. Cookies! What are these? Stop! Fuck! Look what he, what he, stop. <laughs> stop! Please! Stop! Please! Please! Oh my I'm god! It's all good, right? It's all good, right? Stop! Stop! God oh damn. god! Let's find them some fucking cookies. I can't. Ah! What? What is that? Get the rig! <coughs> Yeah, oh my god. God, whoever made this fuck? game just loves camp wrangles, don't they? Gee, what? What happened? <laughs> Jesus Christ. Oh, I literally I, I don't know what the trick. fuck this is supposed wow. to be. Oh, it's a lever, do I? There we go. Because this obviously yes, isn't a fan really game. Fabulous. This is the real Fabulous. bastard fucking ah. thing. Yeah. For uh. fuck's sake, that bitch fucking headshotted me. Ah, oh, shit. Do I have to do everything again? Yeah, he does. Oh, yes, I love it. I'm a psychic! I'm Shrek. Okay, we did it again. Can't wait to see Holy the other shit. side. Holy shit! Oh, what the fuck? What? 
What is happening? Chicken, how did you even get Oh, my God. Bye, chicken. I love you. Oh, God. Woo! I can't. Oh, yes. The oh, blue fat fairies. I remember those from the movie. What you gonna do about it now? What the fuck is this? It's gonna dance for me. Please tell me what this is. Like you wanted me, calling me all the time. Oh yes, go crazy. Oh shit. That's the sound. Oh my god. That's right. That's where the cookie star just dig a little deeper. What the fuck? A little deeper, and you got it. Oh god. Oh sorry. Oh Jesus. My favorite game of all time. Cookies. You're wrinkling my tights! Ha! No shit! That's what shit. I intended to do all along. You're no, wrinkling yeah, my tights! Cookies, follow me. No fucking shit. Follow me, alright? You can't. Yeah. He's really locked in on my ass. He's like, no! <laughs> cookies! No! Cookies! No, my ass! No, his ass, don't go. Don't leave. Oh, this is working, actually. Holy shit. You see that giant fucking cookie thing? If the swamp was a group my home, ass is not my Shrek... Extra Fuck large would be it. Stop. Cookies. Stop. Cookies. Damn it. Jesus Christ, she's fucking pushing me off. Stop pushing. Stop pushing me. I swear to God. Damn it, did he? Oh cookies. my God. All right, you're right. You want some fucking cookies? Then follow me. Don't push me. Oh God. Oh God. They fucking push me. Don't make me fucking put a cookie up your ass. Stop. 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 Oh god, for fuck. Oh god. Oh. I'm just gonna assume that they're following me. Yeah. Oh my god. Get tricked. Cookies! Get it? Wow! Yes! Oh my god, I, I, I can't. I fucking love it, Shrek. <laughs> I love it too, Shrek. What? I love it too. You want a chicken, girl? What the hell? You want a chicken or what? You Good job! Yeah, no shit. What are you doing? Those are my chicken. No basket shit. Where's sheep? Oh what my fucking Fisting god. What the hell, man? Oh, god. Alright, friends. Oh! Ah. Uh, fucking shit. I, I don't fucking... Oh my god. I, I... Okay, what the fuck? This just fucking... Okay, here's my favorite part. My favorite part of this. I, I don't know what the thing is. This, this. <laughs> oh, God. Now, now I know that this is the worst game ever made. Oh. Take that, Atari ZT! Oh my god. I, I don't even know. <laughs> That's just fucking. <laughs> oh. This is the worst game ever made. I officially know it now. It's the worst game ever made. And this is supposed to have come out by the GameCube? What the fuck were the developers on? Were they on whiskey, weed, crack, LSD? Were they on were they on fucking Red Bull when they made this? What the fuck were they on? I mean, Jesus fucking Christ. Y you had to have you had to have suffered from a very very bad case of Selective retardation to have made this absolute disaster. How the hell do you do you fuck up a game so badly that when it's released for the Nintendo GameCube, everybody unanimously shits all over it? How how the fuck do, do you? 
Well, at least we know Mike Myers is starring in this game. Or at least we know that. But now, now imagine, imagine if you wanted to make a professionally made video game, but it's a video game that also happens to be on crack, LSD, double whiskey, and Red Bull. I mean, I don't know, man. <laughs> <laughs> and 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 you know hell, hell I actually I made something last night before I started reviewing this 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 bastard spawn in law of a video game because it obviously doesn't deserve to be called a video game. It's an absolute shit fest. Is what it is. It's a shit fest. Yeah, that's right. It's a shit fest. Yeah. Now now I I had the I had the very inebriated misfortune not not that I ever get inebriated I don't obviously but I had the very bad misfortune of of having to come up with this with this fucking thumbnail and 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 of course this will be the thumbnail for this review obviously cuz it's it's Shrek extra large obviously but I mean look looking at this <laughs> I I look at at, at this because the original thumbnail didn't have the extra Shrek heads on there. And it actually had rainbows in PewDiePie's original thumbnail of his review and playthrough of the game. But, but this, this fucking piece of shit, this, this Shrek extra large is absolutely inexcusable. It's just... <laughs> 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 what the fuck is this? Oh god! I don't know what the fuck to do. <laughs> this guy with with his fucking smile is as, as wide as God's beard, and and eyes open wide like he's on crack and. Fucking, fucking bong ripping shit. What the fuck? <laughs> I, I don't know what the fuck, man. What the fuck? What is this? Oh my god. No, no, no. If I'm not mistaken, if I'm not mistaken, there is a legit. Wikipedia article on this game. There is a Wikipedia article on this game. I'm I'm telling you. I'm seriously. I'm I'm not even kidding. I'm I'm serious. There is a legit article on this game. I'm 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 fucking done. Mm. Mm. Okay, so Shrek, as we know, is a 2001 video game developed by DICE, Digital Illusion CE, and published by TDK Media Active for the Xbox, based on the 2001 animated DreamWorks film of the same name, Released on 14 November 2001 as one of 22 North American launch titles for the Xbox. And later in year... 22 fucking launch titles? Jesus fucking Christopher. This game got 22 launch titles. What the hell? My god. Oh man. What 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 in the hell? A port of the game called Shrek Extra Large was released on the Nintendo GameCube on 31 November 2002 in North America and on 24 October 2003 in Europe. An entire year the Europeans had to wait for a game 
that fucking sucked. A game that sucked. That's inexcusable. Now this game was one of the first to make use of commercial deferred shading. The player competes and completes objectives, good deeds. In most objectives, the player turns for an object and completes an action. Not many objectives vary from this, though a few will occasionally vary. That's it. That's all he had to say about this game. Because it absolutely sucked. The plot. Following a very completely different narrative than that of the eponymous film, which is based on, Shrek is meant to be a continuation of the story of the film. See, this is what happens when you don't follow the original script of the movie. You get Shrek Extra Large. Taking place after the title character has set out to regain his swamp and become a de facto hero to the fairy tale creatures. Shrek is delivered a message by the infamous Magic Mirror that his wife, Princess Fiona, has been captured by an evil wizard named Merlin. Shrek must travel through his dark tower and his fortress of pure evil, but an impossible fog has been laid across the fairy tale lands. The fog in Merlin's fortress can be passed through the completion of good deeds, and the magic mirror gives Shrek a book of good deeds and offers to teleport how, I don't know, him to places where good deeds are required. That's it. That's the whole plot. It's a continuation of the original Shrek movie, which was not included into the sequel in 2004, by the way, because that's how bad this game was. Receptions of the game ranged from very, very, very unbelievably mixed to god-awful fucking negative. Game rankings and Metacritic gave it a store a score of 52%. Holy shit. They gave this... This this bootlegged fucking game of 52%. If, if I were playing this game, I would give it a zero. With 52 style points based on the fucking hilarity of the awfulness of this fucking game. And 49 out of 100 for the Xbox version. And 34% and 36 out of 100 for the GameCube. What the fuck? I mean, are you fucking kidding me? This is, this cannot be fucking, ugh. Oh. And you mean to tell me, the people who designed this game, to the, to the people who made this game, to Gary Convo, to Atman Benstock, to Dennis Carlson, to David Kerr, I have this suggestion to make to you guys, and, and I'm just being completely honest. For the love of fuck, never make another game, please. Because Shrek Extra Large just proved that you suck at making video games. And I especially feel sorry for the man who had to compose the music for the game, David Kerr. I feel so sorry for that guy. Then again, maybe I shouldn't. I don't know. I mean, fuck, you know? I, I don't even... I legit don't understand wh why... See, if, if you don't follow the original script of the movie to port into the video game in a way that resembles The Simpsons Hit and Run, in a way that resembles WWE's Day of Reckoning, in a way that fucking resembles, I don't know, 
Miss Pac-Man, for example. If you don't follow the script of the original movie to the T while you're making your video game and make it look like something out of the movie instead of a cheap $3 bootleg, then you will have never come up with this fucking god-awful disaster piece known as Shrek Extra Large. With a side of Tourette's guy double-decker. I mean, I don't know, man. Okay. I'm done. I'm done reviewing this game. I never have to review this game again. And I had two people who are very famous on YouTube help me do it. And thank you guys. Thank you, Peanut Butter Gamer. Thank you, PewDiePie, for helping me review this. And I know you're probably not going to lay a comment on this video because you're too busy not giving a shit about your fan base. But thank you anyway for helping me review this in spirit. I very, very much appreciate it. Thank you, guys. And with that... I really don't know what else to say, so... Thank you. Wow! And now let's all shout with pride, in unison, mind you. These... What is the worst Wii video game of all time from Nintendo? Somebody help me, I'm going to die! Well, have I got the answer for you? It's not Ninja Bread Man, it's not that Parappa the Rapper and Spidled Marching Bland parody. It's all of them. Every single Wii game sucks. All of them. Idiots. Just a bunch of mindless pussy ass fucks. It's never cross be like, ah, fuck you! Idiots. Fuck you! That's what all the dems be like. <laughs> ah, shit. It's just not easy. It's too easy. Welcome to another episode of Scully Goes Wide, mother... Yeah, everything's just falling apart today. Alright, I'm gonna discuss with you all the five worst game shows to ever be revived or given a second or even a third life. For this particular list, I mean, it's pretty simple. I'm doing it in a Scully Goes Wide kind of manner. And, and, you know, these particular game show revivals not only deviate from the norm of the original run so much that they're practically abominations of the originals, but they're nothing like the originals, and at the same time, they're completely screwed up. All right, let's get started. Number five, Tic-Tac-Toe 1990. I'm not really going to give two shits on what to say about that other than you got a bunch of people writing the show who can't even book their way through a show, much less into a show. And and you got the same people who, who can't even, these guys, you know, they, they can't even write on a freaking piece of paper the phrase, you know, I can't even can't do that. I mean, what the hell? It, it's kind of, it, it kind of makes you wonder, doesn't it? And you know, the original Tic-Tac-Toe, which by the way, was hosted by Bill Cullen, if I recall correctly, that show not only had a time-tested formula 
but it was also a time-tested formula that was not meant to be with. And the 1990 version of Tic-Tac-Toe, what do they do? They with it. Because of course they do, and that's why the show lasted as long as it did, or in this case, as short as it did. I don't even know who thought that such an abomination of a revival or a reboot would ever come to light. I mean, I, I don't, I really don't get it. I don't get it, period. I'll never understand it to save my life. I'll never truly allow myself to understand it to save my neck from the news because I'm just not meant to. Because you're not meant to understand shit like that. You understand? It's pretty simple. You're not meant to understand sh like that because sh like that deserves to be in the garbage can. Because it's sh You understand? It's sh I mean, I'm not going to go into it any further. Perhaps maybe it's best that I don't go into it any further. Number four on the list. There's actually a tie for fourth place. So if you're expecting five game shows that got revived that shouldn't have gotten revived in the first place in the way that they did, probably expect maybe a couple more of those. Right, number four. It's a tie for number four. The match game Hollywood Squares Hour and... Of course, the 2008 version of American Gladiators. I'm going to start with the more obvious one, American Gladiators 2008. The concept is pretty straightforward. You've got, and, and by the way, I watched the rebooted American Gladiators from 2007 to 2009. Or basically when it, when it aired in 2008 and 2009 and 10, you know? And... The fact that they had an ex-WWE professional wrestler named Hulk Hogan who inadvertently and purposefully was put on the rebooted American Gladiator show to basically sabotage it from deep within. Perhaps that was probably most telling of all. And, and maybe I shouldn't point this out, and maybe I should. And I'll tell you why. When he goes to interview a contestant, every three seconds he says, brother, or, well, let me tell you something, brother. Or some shit like that. And I probably shouldn't say shit, but you understand, because she hits the fan, and when she hits the fan, you gotta get real. You understand? Because that isn't going to wait for you to get real. you got to get real with it. And of course, Hollywood Squares was sabotaged by Mark Goodson. Despite the fact that it was not Mark Goodson's creation. Which is why I include Match Games Hollywood Squares Hour as the co-holder of the number four spot on this particular list. And, and you know what's funny? What's so funny about this is that Mark Goodson created the match game and went about that part of the reboot of the two popular shows flawlessly. But since Hollywood Squares was not his creation, but rather that of, you know, Merritt or Merrill Herod or whatever the hell his name is, you know, this, this guy named Merrill, right, created a Hollywood Squares Hour. And as a matter of fact, hell, let me, let me look it up now. Let me look it up now. Right. So, Merrill Heater, right? That's his name. Aren't you glad I'm able to remember stuff through a computer? Aren't you guys glad about that? Now, since Hollywood Squares was Merrill Heater's creation... Mark Goodson thought it'd be a good idea to reboot the two shows into an hour-long programming show to bastardize Hollywood Squares and 
angelize the match game as it was once revived in 1973 with the original host of the 62 to 69 version hosting it for nine years. Now you know why that was successful. We all know why that was successful. And for obvious reasons that I'm not going to go into, the Match Game Hollywood Squares Hour was a big fail, not because of the way that the Match Game portion of it was carried out, but because of how poorly executed the Hollywood Squares portion of it was carried out by Mark Goodson, who sabotaged Meryl Hader's own creation. And instead of having John Davidson host it or Peter Marshall host it, he had some know-nothing schmuck named John Bauer, whatever his hell, whatever his name was. He was once the host of the Pop and Rocker game. But he was hired to host the Hollywood Squares portion of the Match Game Hollywood Squares Hour just to sabotage the product. And it was not John's it was not John Bauman's fault. Aren't you glad I correct myself as fast as I do? But John Bauman, who was the host of the Pop and Rocker game, was hired aboard the sinking ship of the Titanic that was the Match Game Hollywood Squares Hour to intentionally and deliberately sabotage the Hollywood Squares portion of the Match Game Hollywood Squares Hour through no fault of his own, but rather through all the fault of one Mark Goodson. Just because of the fact that it was Meryl Hayter's creation, not that of Mark Goodson. Number three, and keep in mind, this one wasn't poorly as executed as with other particular knockoffs of reboots. Dare I say it, you know, number three on this list, are you smarter than a fifth grader? Now, why did it get revived? Because the original sucked in comparison. It lasted from what was it, 2007 to 2010? And it insulted the intelligence of every adult just about that agreed to be a contestant on the show. And it featured questions that obviously the contestants were all scripted to either answer fraudulently or just deliberately get wrong. That's why the show initially got canned. What Fox won't tell you, the guys in charge of the show, is that Mark Burnett, the guy who created the disaster in the first damn place, rebooted the show for a 2015 revival with an updated version of the David Vanacore theme song of Are You Smarter Than a Fifth Grader? Are you smarter than a fifth grader? Are you dumber than a masturbator? Don't you wish you could be back in school? Cause you're not smarter than you used to be. <laughs> I know, it's not, that's not how the fucking song goes, obviously. Cause it doesn't use the word masturbator in there. But it might as well have. Because the show and its reboot in entirety sucked. And, and I'm going to tell you why. Because from the very first moment following the announcement that the show was going to get rebooted, everybody justifiably and rightfully shat all over it. They shat all over it because it sucked. They shat all over it because they knew it was going to suck. And they shat all over it because they didn't expect it to even come close to succeeding. And they knew that Are You Smarter Than a Fifth Grader was going to suck too in its initial run, but they expected something good out of it. And when something good didn't come out of it and nothing came of it, they still blindly watched the show, still waiting for it to get better, and then 
in 2010, they finally realized, okay, this show's not going to get better. I'm going to quit watching it because the show fucking sucks. Meanwhile, Mark Burnett had the brilliant idea of rebooting the show for a 2015 run and revival, which did nobody any favors whatsoever because this show sucked. I don't think I even need to get in that one, right? Now, I don't know if you guys are aware of this or not, and quite frankly, I don't care. But the fact remains. The fact remains. There are actually, surprisingly, there are three equally as bad reboots of the originals that all simultaneously deserve the number two spot on my list because they are exactly that. They're number two. They're shit. I'm talking about the 23, the 2003 version of Let's Make a Deal hosted by Access Hollywood's, oh my god, Billy fucking Bush hosted the reboot <laughs> Oh, let's make a thing. 40 years after it first premiered on the network in which the initial reboot ran on NBC. It was expected for a brief five episode cameo run of sorts, but it only lasted three episodes because of the fact that Billy Bush hosted it. And the guys behind the reboot, including, oh my god, Monty Hall. What about that guy, right? He was the original host of the show in its initial run. But he was only hired to be the executive producer of the 40th anniversary reboot of it in 2003 when Billy Bush was hosting it simply because he was going to be paid millions and millions of dollars to do it. Of course, the guy at the time was in his 80s, so he wasn't all there. I wouldn't be all there if I was in my 80s, too. Not that I'm going to be in my 80s anytime soon. Of course, that'll only be about 75 years from now. No, wait, I'd be 100. Never mind. More like 55 years from now. But that's beside the point. The 2003 revamp of Let's Make a Deal was goddamn terrible from the beginning to the end, which is why it only lasted three of the initial five episodes it was intended to last for before getting axed permanently until 2009 when it was revived on CBS and hosted by the very popular co-hosts Wayne Brady, Jonathan Mangum, and the model Tiffany Klumer, or whatever is, whatever her name is. Her name's Tiffany. She's the model for the show. And those three, in this latest reboot of the, of the popular game show once hosted by Monty Hall, has lasted since 2009 and is going to premiere season 10 of it this coming week according to my local TV stations. Another worthy and equally terrible note that deserves to be mentioned in equal regard as being a number two on my list would be the terrible, ridiculous reboot of Temptation, also known as the new... NEW... Sale of the Century. The only reason why it was called Temptation is because... Oh, by the way, they gave away the fact that it was the new sale of the century, despite the fact that it had a long-running TV game show in Australia of the same name from 1983 to 2001, I would say. And then, of course, it's based... Almost not 
in any way on the Jim Perry version of the show, which was hosted by Jim Perry himself from 1983 to 1989 for about six and a quarter years. And that got axed, and it was revived in, I don't know, 2003-ish, 2001-ish, 2002-ish, and it was, they produced 130 episodes over a span of three weeks, which is completely inexcusable. If, if you're going to make 130 episodes, let it be in about nine weeks, not three. Have some space between shows. Oh, oh, and they had this this worthless nobody host the show. Nobody knows his name because nobody cares to know his name because he's a bloke. Another particular bad show in particular that also deserves to be number two on this list which also holds the same number two spot as Temptation, the new sill of the century, and the infamous 2003 revamp of Let's Make a Deal, which, by the way, had some very provocative staged material on there, which included women trying to fondle a black athlete which didn't go anywhere with anybody. In fact, it only furthered the cancellation inevitabilities and completely fucked that show to high hell. But the third and last co-owner of the number two spot on this list is, of course, the 2001 version of Card Sharks, which was hosted by Pat Bullard and in no way was related to the 1978 to 81 or 86 to 89 versions hosted by the legendary Jim Perry, rest in peace, and Bob Eubanks, respectively. Or respectively. Aren't you glad I'm able to correct myself so easily? But, but let, me, let me explain something to you, okay? This reboot was so bad that by the second month of its syndication, it had been forced to air reruns of the prior episodes that aired prior to the reruns having to be issued because the show sucked. You got a guy named Pat Bullard who hosted the 2001 reboot, which was created by GSN in an attempt to garner old fans of the show to the product. This was, this was basically at a time when GSN was immature and in its awkward phase. As a matter of fact, it was in its awkward phase until about 2014 when it finally decided to just, you know, get its head out of its keister long enough to cancel the widely shat on American Bible Challenge. Why the hell was that even a show, by the way? But Card Sharks 2001 was the absolute drizzling, pissing shits. And for good reason. Too many changes to the original formula, a terrible endgame, and Pat Bowler did none of the work except ask the questions. And by the way, by the way, there were too many changes in the particular revamp as opposed to the original formula for which the show was famous for. Even the YouTube web show that's obviously scripted, hosted by Game Show Entertainment, and some guy on YouTube who works for that particular YouTube channel, hosted the show at, at basically a next-to-nothing budget. You know, and it's really, really sad when a tribute version of the popular show beats the 2001 version of it, which promised that a contestant who went to the money cards could win over $50,000 on the all-new card charts. I mean, fuck. If you put all new in there, it instantly kills the nostalgia 
and completely shits on whatever was left of it in the first place. Number one, and I know it's not really going to come as a shock to you, it probably... My God, I don't, I don't know if I should mention number one to you. As a matter of fact, I don't know if I want to mention number one to you. Um, I'm, I'm just going to come right out and I'm going to say it. And I'm, I'm going to completely tell you like it is. And, and I'm not just... All right, well... I'll tell you like it is, the weakest link from 2002 to 2003, GSN. Of course GSN, right? Because because of course, right? Because reasons, we know what they are. The weakest links run on GSN from 2002 to 2003 was, I mean, it wasn't as good as it should have been. And there were high hopes for this, especially since George Gray was announced as the host who had previously hosted Extreme Gong from, I think, 1998 to 2000. So he had a bit of experience. But this guy had more of a class clownish type of demeanor about him. When, in reality, you're supposed to be the successor to the throne of the Queen of Mean herself, Anne Robinson, who hosted the British version of the show from 2001 to 2016 or 2015. It lasted a hell of a lot longer than the American version on NBC from 2001 to 2002, and a hell of a lot longer than the GSN version from 2002 to 2003. For reasons I'm not going to discuss, the dollar amounts for the GSN reboot were, were like pennies in comparison to the mass amounts of money you could win on the Ann Robinson Americanized version of the host of, of the show, which was hosted on NBC from 2001 to 2002. Now, while I'm not going to explain why this is the worst reboot of a show in the first place I will give it credit however for having stuck to the initial formula the problem however was that it was condensed to half the time of the particular original British version and the much shorter lasting NBC American version both of which were absolutely stellar in their own rights. But this one had no excuse, you know. If, if you're talking about high stakes, if you want high stakes, at least be like the NBC or the British version, not the GSN version. And I know you're going to disagree with me having dubbed it number one on the worst game show reboots of all time. But there is one in particular that is much worse than that, and that in particular would be one of the international versions of the original Pressure Luck game show, and it had absolutely no excitement to it whatsoever, because the winner of that particular show in each episode would be walking away with the equivalent of about a thousand dollars in American money which is not shit compared to the actual American version of the show which initially ran as second chance for a few weeks in 1978 and as pressure luck from 1986 to 89 or 83 to 86 I should say why am I confusing card sharks with pressure luck fuck me but the Pressure Luck version from 83 to 86 in America on CBS, that was excitement. But the inter one of the international versions of it, I'm not going to tell you which one. I'm pretty sure it was either 
Well, actually, I'm going to tell you which one. It was the English version. The English version. I mean, it was just, it was just meh. There was no excitement to it whatsoever, whereas the, even the GSN version of Pressure Luck, also known as Whammy, which ran from 2001 to 2002, even that, as, as wishy-washy as it was, at least that had some excitement to it. Along with the CBS version of Pressure Luck, which ran from 86, nah, from 83 to 86. You understand? Aren't you glad I'm able to correct myself? But anyway, that's the list. And this episode has been brought to you by absolutely no one except for me. And the Corporation for Public Broadcasting, which is paid in part by absolutely nobody because nobody cares about it anymore. Jesus Christ.